I'm here at Mystic Float. These guys were nice enough to invite me down to their establishment and there's no one else here. So I guess if I wanted to, I could go in there high as a kite. So just in case you guys are wondering, this is not my home. I did not kill that moose. Jasmine did. I've heard of floating from many public figures before. For example, Joe Rogan is a huge proponent of sensory deprivation tanks. It's my understanding that he likes to go in them high as f Even the guy who invented floating, a neuroscientist named John C. Lilly back in 1954, used to go in his own tanks while under the influence of LSD. It just seems to be the thing to do. You go to these float tanks, hi. Apparently it allows you to experience an even greater psychedelic state than say if you were just high in your home. Unfortunately, most floating establishments will make you sign a waiver on the way in that explicitly states you will not access the tanks while under the influence of any drugs. Fortunately for my case, I'm special. In all seriousness, if you wanted to float and say you wanted to do it high, if you were worried about say the smell, you could just eat an edible before going in. I highly doubt that a lot of these places are gonna be like, nope, you smell like weed, you can't come in. According to YouTube's guidelines shown here, videos which intend to educate are documentary by nature and do not glorify the use of drugs. Both abide by the community safety guidelines and are eligible for monetization. The following video does not glorify the use of drugs, instead it attempts to be non-biased while delivering vital life-saving information disguised as entertainment. I like to eat turtles with lots of gravy and soy sauce. We do not display graphic use, there are no scenes showcasing drug consumption, and any insinuation of use should be taken as satirical at best. Thanks YouTube, and don't forget to visit our Patreon page after the video for extra content and behind-the-scenes footage that only our patrons get to see. I love you, mother <laughs> So what is the point of floating? Well, the point of the tanks is obviously so that your senses are deprived. I mean, it's pitch black in there, so whether your eyes are open or closed, it makes no difference. You are floating in 900 pounds of magnesium sulfate. So even if you wanted to try to like push yourself down, it's really difficult to. It really does just cause you to float above the surface. You've also got earplugs in your ears, so you can't hear anything that's going on around you. And finally, the water is heated to the same temperature as your body, making it so that you can't really even feel the water on your skin, or at least that's how it's supposed to feel. And the final product is a feeling that's well, akin to being in a zero gravity chamber with the lights out. The goal of removing all your senses is to help the mind let go of everyday concerns so that it can access meditative and trance-like states with ease. There are also claimed to be physical benefits. It's supposed to remove fatigue. It's supposed to help with the healing of sore muscles. But these are not the effects that we are after in this video. What we're after is basically to find out if floating in one of these tanks will better help me access a trance-like or meditative state while sober. And also, we're gonna compare that to going in high. We're going to see if floating in one of these tanks while high will turn what could normally just be, you know, a regular marijuana trip into a full-blown psychedelic experience. Then I intend to compare both experiences so I can let you guys know which one I prefer. Do I prefer doing it sober or high? Jasmine, my girlfriend, is also going to be experiencing a float. She'll be doing it sober. Without further ado, let's head off to our first float session. I'm here at Mystic Float, and today I'm gonna to be doing the sober float. These guys were nice enough to invite me down to their establishment, and there's no one else here. So I guess if I wanted to, I could go in there high as a kite, but that's next time. This thing is pretty insane looking. I'm gonna, come here, I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like in this thing. It is a whole room that you can stand up in that you can do a float in. You can pick any color you want. I just, I thought green would be neat. So I'm just gonna get ready for my float. Pretty much what you do is get totally naked and then have a quick shower. Then you jump into the room, hit the button, music plays, and you enjoy the duration of your flow. Um, what I'm most curious about, I guess, is just to see the psychedelic properties of this. A lot of people claim that fl floating uh, can be like a psychedelic experience because it's pretty much, well it is, sensory deprivation, so I don't want to talk too much because there's tons of echo in here. 
Well, I just had my shower. The next step is pretty much to float and have all of my senses deprived. Catch you guys later. So that was supposed to be a 40 minute float and that felt like 15 minutes. That's weird. I'm not gonna lie, the strangest thing about that float was it, uh, it only felt like 15 or 20 minutes. I can't believe that I was just in there for 40 minutes. That is crazy. Yeah, that felt really fast. Um, I think I was in a state between being asleep and being awake, kind of. Uh, it was very much so like a trance meditative type state. Otherwise, I don't believe the time would have gone by so fast, which I was not expecting. I was expecting to go in there and for it to drag out and be uncomfortable and feel gross and slimy, but that wasn't the case. That was actually really comfortable. And leaving this first float, which was a sober float, I'm feeling like I'm excited to try that again. So interesting and unexpected. I'll, um, yeah, that's about it for now. You are on. Um, so how did you like the float? Well, at first I was really skeptical going in, but um, after I kind of like eased my way into the tank, um, it was really nice. I felt like I was kind of floating through space. I don't think I ever lost track of like which way was up or down but I kind of felt myself like spinning in circles like this and like gliding front and back even though I wasn't moving at all. And just kind of let my mind get like off of everything that was worrying me. And I was really able to pull myself out of myself and analyze what was going on in my life and how I was feeling. And then coming out, I felt really warm. My whole body, like I could feel like muscles really like relaxing and losing tension. My body felt warm. I felt refreshed. I felt rejuvenated. It was awesome. It was definitely something that I would go back and do again. Okay. okay um, did you <laughs> try to stop? <laughs> try not using your hands. Every time your hand enters, it goes foggy and I have to readjust. Well, you didn't tell me that. I didn't know. <laughs> did you access like a meditative state? I don't think I ever reached a meditative state, but I reached a self-analysis state. So I was able to better take a look at things that were bugging me or my life in general and take a step back and kind of work through some problems that I've been having. You actually got all that out of just one float? And I wasn't expecting to get anything. I was in there for 40 minutes. I think we had it for 50 minutes. Um, and I, I felt like I got a lot more out of it than I was expecting. Like I really was expecting just kind of be pushing off the walls and like gliding and having fun and being really bored but I found that it was actually very healing. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Thanks. Thanks for the interview, sweetheart. Mm. You're welcome. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> well, you guys get to see me undress again as I go into the sensory deprivation tank for my second time at Mystic Float. Hi. Well, no. Sorry, this is my first time hi. My float is starting. The robot is talking to me. If you guys can't tell, um, I'm pretty high right now. I imagine I'm acting silly. So yeah, let you guys know how this goes. Well, now that I've had both of my float sessions, both high and sober, I guess you guys are wondering what I thought of them. Uh, I would have to say that if I were to do this again, I would probably just scratch doing it high off the list. In terms of whether or not it was a full intensive like psychedelic type trip, it was definitely a psychedelic trip. So yeah, that, that part was accurate. And my thoughts were just, they were going wild. In the beginning, I battled through a lot of paranoia just because you are in an enclosed area and cannabis 
can sometimes cause paranoia. So being in an enclosed area, uh, being in complete darkness, definitely imposed a lot of frightening thoughts on me, or well, my mind imposed frightening thoughts on itself, which uh, once I worked through, the experience got a lot better. I was kind of battling uh, urges to leave. Like part of me kept saying, just open the door for a second, just take a breath of fresh air, because it was a little humid in there and the air was hot and it was, making me in my paranoid state feel like I was having difficulty breathing when in reality I was breathing just fine. Uh, I'm proud of myself that I managed to fight through the paranoia and stay in the tank because after those first 30 minutes, uh, the experience definitely improved. It's just because of the cannabis, it kind of made me more aware of being in the tank at times. At times I felt like I was, you know, shooting through outer space and it was like a full-on psychedelic experience with vivid mental imagery and, you know, everything. But at other times I was just like, okay, I'm in this tank, I'm having a difficult time breathing, I just really want to get out, when will this end? If you do intend to float high, at least with weed, you should probably get adequately used to doing it sober before you jump into being high. Considering I've only done two sober floats in my life, and then I jumped into it high, I don't think I had enough experience with the tank. The sober float was actually awesome. I found it incredibly easy to access a meditative trance-like state. Uh, like I've already said, I was in there for, I think, 45 minutes, and it felt like 15. Like, when it ended, I, I actually thought that something glitched out and the ending music had come on too early. It was really cool. I, I can't really say that I gained much because for this to really be an accurate video, I would need to probably do like five floats sober, five, five floats high. And since we're with limited time, I can only do one sober float and one high float, meaning my results may be a little skewered. But from my limited experience, I would say that I liked it sober better. I left the sober experience feeling rejuvenated. I felt really good. Uh, I definitely felt better than when I got in the tank. I'd say it's not for everybody, but um, it, it's a neat experience that you should try at least once. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to leave me a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for weekly psychedelic related content. I'd like to give a huge thank you to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. You guys are seriously making these videos happen. If you would like to check out Patreon and get behind my mission with the channel, then you can do so here. Till next time, stay safe guys, always test your substances, and yeah, I will see you guys later. Take care guys.